Representative from Tennessee, Mr. Cohn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This issue is one that affects quite a few of my constituents in Memphis and also some folks in Nashville who are also my constituents, having lived there for many years. And they're songwriters and they're singers, performers, and while the songwriter has been compensated, and I have a strong alliance and appreciation of songwriters, I think that the singers, performers have been shortchanged. I met Sammy Kahn one time and it was great to meet him, and I have read about Jimmy Van Heusen and listened to Harold Arlen's music over the years and all these great songwriters, and they produced beautiful music and they were geniuses. But if it weren't for Frank Sinatra singing their songs, people wouldn't be listening. There's a way that a performer delivers a song that makes it special, and yeah, the songwriter creates it and the songwriter's compensated, but without the singer emoting and making it special, you're not going to have people listening. I agree that back in the 50s, people like Alan Freed, who played rock and roll, and Dewey Phillips in my hometown of Memphis, who kind of got Elvis out there, without them spinning records that people otherwise wouldn't have had access to, you wouldn't have had rock and roll. You might not have had Elvis. But that's not the situation anymore with the Internet and other forms out there. It's not the disc jockeys who are mostly playing program music, which doesn't give people who are original and creative people, originators, an opportunity really to get heard. Those people are getting heard on low-frequency stations, the ones that I'm pleased this bill takes into consideration. And I appreciate the RIA and everybody else that work with NPR and the small wattage stations to see that they're not adversely affected by what wasn't intended in this bill. They're the ones that give the new creative folks an opportunity. It used to be that the major broadcast stations did. It doesn't happen anymore. So I think it's been an injustice that the performers had. Elvis, I don't think, ever wrote a song. I doubt Frank Sinatra did. But nobody could perform a song like Frank Sinatra and Elvis. When you think of singers, you think of music, you think of them. You don't think of Stoller and his partner. You don't think necessarily of Sammy Kahn and Van Heusen. You think of Elvis. You think of Frank Sinatra. When I think of these boots made for walking, I think of Nancy Sinatra. I'm not sure if another singer could have made them dance, could have made them walk. Lee Hazelwood wrote it, but it was Nancy that made those boots walk. And it's the performer that makes things special. So they need to be compensated. I think we've come a long way, and I'm pleased to be part of this committee that's going to end this injustice that's gone on for years and the free use of these great people's talents. And if I can take one minute to reflect, I want to thank Ms. Sinatra for being here. I'm a big fan of her father's. I have seen him, seen him perform four or five times in my life. I have his picture up, big picture in my home, and all kinds of Sinatra books everywhere. But he came to Memphis and performed at the St. Jude Shower of Stars on several occasions, which was a big thing in Memphis and a big thing for me to attend. And I know that uh, when Elvis came back from serving in our military in Germany, you facilitated his uh, going to be on that show. And I don't think there's a greater moment in show business than uh, even though they made those songs, than, than your father singing Love Me Tender and Elvis singing Witchcraft. A great moment. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much.